Hello students. Today we're going to be talking about registration for the upcoming school year. School year 2019-2020. Let's review our registration objectives. We will discuss graduation requirements. We will distribute your registration cards. We will talk about your transcript and what it says about you. And then finally, we will review the registration process. Now let's take a look at MCPS graduation requirements. You will need 22 total credits to meet the graduation requirements for Montgomery County Public Schools. As you review the information, you will see or note you will need four credits in English, four credits in mathematics to include algebra one, geometry, and two math electives. Every student in the state of Maryland must take a math course for the entirety of their high school career. You will need three credits of science, biology, chemistry, and physics. Social studies, three credits, U.S. history, NSL government, and world history. Technology, one credit. Foundations of computer science, foundations of technology, or AP computer science principles, will meet that graduation requirement. Physical education, one credit. Art, one credit. Health education, 0.5 credits. And then you will need what we call a program completer. Option one would be two credits in a world language. Option two, two credits in advanced technology. Or option three, completion of a state approved program of study. For example, cosmetology or auto body technology. For graduation, you're expected to complete a minimum of 75 SSL hours, student service learning hours. You can begin these hours in the sixth grade to grade 12. Um, you also have to take some state exams, and these six exams are Algebra 1. English 10, NSO Government, and Science. We want to help you with making good course decisions. Consider honors and AP courses. Be aware of the expectations and time commitment of advanced courses. And make sure that you commit to the learning challenge. Identify at least two alternative elective courses. Did you know students who take an honors or AP class are better prepared for college and post-secondary training? Students who take an AP class can possibly earn college credits while in high school or a score of three or higher, with a score of three or higher. Students who take an honors or an AP class in high school will most likely complete their college degree. Now we'll take a look at the registration card. Please note, your registration card is set up in the following order. You have your English classes, your ESOL classes, your mathematic classes, your teacher recommended courses. In the center of the card, you have your science courses, social studies, world languages, physical education and health, and then in the third column, you have your elective subjects. We would like for you to note the following. If you're taking an AP course for the first time, it is highly recommended that you sign up for the AP support class. If you are interested in the internship program, you must sign up for it in advance. Please note, the in internship program is only for rising seniors. Thomas Edison High School of Technology. Thomas Edison High School of Technology offers a variety of programs for students across Montgomery County Public Schools. These courses that are offered will provide students with an opportunity to pursue their career interest. The programs at Thomas Edison High School of Te Technology are application based. If you're interested in applying for any of these programs, please speak with your school counselor. 
Now we'll look at the other side of the registration card. As you know, at Gaithersburg High School, we have what we call career pathways. Career pathways are courses that you can take in your area of interest. First, we have art and communications. Next, we have business studies. Leadership and education. In the third column, you have your science and technology courses. And in the bottom part of the card, you have your college and career readiness courses. So students, if you are interested in pursuing any of these career pathways, we strongly encourage you to identify courses that are listed on your registration card. Now let's look at some registration directions. First, you must print clearly. Complete personal information at the top of the card. So that means we need your name, your student ID, and your grade for the next school year. The language spoken at home. And please identify whether or not you have an IEP, a 504 plan, or if you are an ESOL student. Use the teacher recommendations to guide your course selection. The teacher recommendation is the top right-hand corner of the registration card. If you do not know who your counselor is, that information is available at the end of this presentation. Just to continue the registration directions, please circle the courses for both semester. You should have 14 credits total. Check the course title and course number for each selection. Review the Gaithersburg High School course list on the inside of the booklet and select seven classes or seven credits. This will give you your 14 classes. Then write your course selections in the table to the right by semester. Choose at least two alternatives. So for example, number one, English, semester one. Number one, English, semester two. And you would do this for each subject that you select. After you select your courses, you're going to sign and obtain a parent or guardian signature below the important information at the bottom of this page. Sign up for the courses when you meet with your counselor during the designated class period. Every student needs to complete a program completer for graduation. Check next to the one you are currently pursuing. So whether that's foreign language, whether that's college and career readiness, or perhaps you're in the Project Lead the Way program, or you may be pursuing business studies, cosmetology, or auto body. Whatever your program completer is, please identify it on your registration card. As previously mentioned, you'll now pick one of the four career pathway options. Leadership and education career pathway, art and communication career pathway, business studies career pathway, science and technology career pathway. Now that you've had an opportunity to review the career pathways, you're going to be going to continue with your registration directions by you choosing a pathway that you are currently focusing on. You will use the template to help you figure out how far you are towards completion of that pathway. To successfully complete any one career pathway, a student must complete three designated elective credits within that career pathway and one credit of a capstone experience. A career pathway capstone experience can be one of the following. An advanced placement course, a college institute course, or a year-long internship. Students may complete more than one career pathway. Now let's look at some of the many options available at Thomas Edison High School of Technology. You have printing, graphic and electronic media, biotechnology, medical careers, 
foundations of building and construction technologies, carpentry, electricity, heating and air conditioning, masonry, plumbing, hospitality and tourism, nail technology, professional restaurant management, network operation and planning, interior design, drafting and design technology, foundations of automotive technologies. Remember, Thomas Edison High School of Technology does require an application for any of its programs. Please see your school counselor if you're interested in any of the programs as Thomas Edison High School of Technology. Are you college or career ready? Success upon high school graduation will be defined as enrolling in a credit bearing college course with no remediation, earning a living wage, entering the military, completing a technical school with experiential learning, receiving industry training and certification, earning an associate's or bachelor's degree after graduation, or earning college credits or an associate's degree before graduation. Are you ready? What's up, Cheeperg? This is Dr. O. Young. So let's talk a little bit about your transcript, okay? So you're going to have a transcript, and on the transcript is all the listing of all the courses that you've taken. So it's going to have everything from the English requirement, the math requirement, the science requirement, fine arts, world language, or program completer, um, as well as uh, tech ed and PE. So it's going to hit everything on there, and the colleges are going to look at that. That is the one piece of paper that the colleges will see and review. In addition, they'll have the cumulative GPA and the weighted GPA that you'll be able to, um, that the colleges will see and determine if you are appropriate for their particular college. This will be reviewed by your counselor to make sure that you're fulfilling all graduation requirements. If you're missing one thing, just one thing, you're not walking, people. So make sure you review everything on there with your counselor that you have everything fulfilled for your college process and that you're ready for the next steps. Okay, on the back of the transcript, it has your credit requirements, your state assessment requirements, as well as your student service learning hours. Now, this is not reviewed as much by the colleges as much as your counselor as well as Maryland State Department of Education to make sure you have these requirements fulfilled as well. So you have to pass four assessments for the uh, uh, high uh, Maryland State requirements. So the Maryland State requirements for the assessments are in algebra, English, government, and science. You have to have a combined score passing on all of these to receive a Maryland State Diploma. In addition, you have the SSL hours, the Student Service Learning Hours. Those hours need to be above 75 in order to fulfill the Maryland State requirement. However, I'm encouraging all of you, all of you, to try to do at least 275 hours. Because if you do 275 hours, then you get a Community Service Award. And that looks sweet for the colleges. They want to know that you have a good, caring heart. So you want to do those. Finally, at the very bottom of the transcript, the last page of the transcript, is all your credit requirements. And they want to see that you have 22 credits completed. Again, people, if you're missing just 0.5, you're not walking. So make sure you fulfill every requirement. All right, now that we reviewed the transcript, let's look at what the colleges are seeking. So this next slide is what a typical University of Maryland freshman looks like. Notice the weighted GPA is 4.15, the SAT scores between 1280 and 1420, and ACT scores between 29 and 33. You need to talk to your counselor about which test you should take, whether it be the SAT or the ACT. They can guide you on that. Notice also the number of applicants is 30,000 for the uh, enrollment of over 4,000. So it is a difficult school to get into, so you really want to make sure your GPA is high as possible. When I worked at the University of Maryland many moons ago, there was only 14,000 applicants for 4,000 spots. So literally the number of applicants have doubled 
and thus the school has become twice as difficult to enter. So again, try to be as academically competitive as possible so that you can get into University of Maryland. Notice also this slide about, again, what a typical University of Maryland freshman looks like. Again, by the Board of Regents, they have all these applicants at a minimum have completed the following. Again, notice four years of English, four years of math, three years of science, three years of history, two years of foreign language. Basically, again, what your transcript requires. So everybody's walking in with the same requirements. All these requirements are going to force University of Maryland to review it and say, okay, you met these requirements. Now you also have the GPA. So come on in to come to College Park and do well, have a little fun, enjoy yourself, and again, get a degree so you can make major mama bucks and, and roll in the dough. That's what we're looking for, people. Get to know your school counselor. Professional school counselors are a role in your education. We monitor student academic progress, provide academic, social, emotional support to students and families, serve as liaisons for students, parents, teachers, and community members, assist students and families with navigating the college admission process and identifying financial aid resources. Self-advocacy. There are many resources for your support in high school. There's school counselors, college and career coordinators, grade level administrators, school nurse, teachers, class sponsors, and coaches. If you need help, you just have to ask. The counselor assignments for the 2018-2019 school year are as follows. Please make sure you write your counselor's name on your registration card. Now let's review the registration directions. First, you will need to sign your card. Your signature and the signature of your parent is mandatory in order to ensure that you Discuss your course options with your parent. The registration cards are due back to your teacher on Thursday, December 20th. So please bring your completed and signed registration card back to your science teacher by Thursday, December 20th and enter your courses into Power Scheduler. Counselors will be available during showtime to assist anyone with Power Scheduler. You will then meet with your counselor in January during your social studies class to review the completion of your card and your courses in Power Scheduler. Some final thoughts. Consult with your current teachers and counselor to help determine the appropriate classes for the next school year. Talk with your parents or guardians as you decide what courses you would like to take. Consider challenging yourself this next school year. Commit to academic excellence.